Not the beast! Not the beast! Hello everybody, welcome to Appa to Zabe. This is going to be part B, my barragement of brilliant CDs. And this is certainly going to be the longest one. As you can see, I've got a ridiculous amount of CDs that was under B, so... <coughs> tight. So please forgive me if I seem to be going a lot quicker. I don't want to keep you guys here for 10 hours. And I don't want to be here for 10 hours because I've got stuff to do. Yeah, so here it is. Okie dokie, so we're kicking things off with the absolute master, Angelo Badalamenti. With the soundtrack to the original series of Twin Peaks. One of my favourite TV shows. Um, you'll notice later on, uh, if you stick around, maybe next episode... And actually own Julie Cruz, who is an artist who is performing on a few of these uh, songs, mainly Fallen, which is an amazing bit of ambient pop. And it's kind of ethereal wave-ish as well, so if you like your Cocteau Twins and groups like that, then this is an essential listen. Bad Astronaut. If you want an underrated sort of emo pop group, then try out Bad Astronaut. With the album Aquaphobe. Yeah. Alama Cab with the album Wonder Wonder. This is a niche subgenre technically of chill step. If you like your ambient electronic music, this is very aquatic, very soothing. Really recommend you check out the song Motion. Gorgeous song. Ooh. Stay there, you bastard, yeah. Uh, battles with the album Mirrors. This is math rock. It's really playful. It's really fun. It's not too. It's a it's math rock, but at the same time, it's not something that you can like have to really concentrate on. Um, it's got very obviously excellent eccentric um, time temples and stuff like that. But it's a really fun album as well. Um, really recommend the song D Diamond D. I suppose it's pronounced. I don't know, but obviously most people would say try out Atlas. So. The race in race out tracks uh, but um yeah so it's a really good album i have listened to the other album gloss drop i think it's called quite a few times there's a song called ice cream which is really good by them but i haven't really tried much of the other stuff that they've done but hey ho we're two for one this this is um the band with the first two albums music from the big oh dear <laughs> music from the big pink and the self-titled band album it took me a while to actually figure out that they've done a lot with bob dylan um, but a lot of songs here are just brilliant folk tracks. Um, one of my favourite ever songs ever is I Shall Be Released. Oh, the Weight is excellent. Tears of Rage, Across the Big Divide. I mean, I'm just looking on both these two albums here. Um, but this is just, well, this package I suppose is excellent too. But both albums are essential if you like your folk or your rock music, especially from the 60s. If you want some classic black metal, then I'd recommend you try out Bathory. Uh, this guy kind of pioneered black metal in its sound with its low fidelity, um, its vocals and such like that. But he was going on since like the mid 80s. Uh, this is, I think, his third album, or maybe his fourth, where he ends up actually doing war metal and Viking metal. Uh, one of the first albums to incorporate that sort of subgenre of a subgenre as well. Um, this is a great listen. There's a song on here uh, called, where is it? For All Those Who Died. There's um, some like really breathtaking songs. Like he's got some really nice clean vocals too. Um, the, the band Emperor um, done a song uh, cover of one of these songs on this album. That's really good too. Um, but yeah, this is this is a really solid album. The reason why this section of B is so big is that there's a lot of bands that I have a lot of albums by uh, artists too. 
Um, and one of them is the Beach Boys, who are one of my favourite bands of all time. Yes, you'll you'll know some songs by them, and you'll probably think they're good, but maybe you might think that they're a bit corny, maybe a bit cheesy, a bit cheese corny, a bit corn cheesy. Um, but they're not. Um, you'll get some of the most brilliant euphoric happy music ever um, not just the 60s but in general the way these guys harmonize and make just some of the most beautiful melodies you'll ever hear is just just brilliant if you're a fan of the beach boys you know it's a bit of a roller coaster journey from how brian wilson got on throughout his life in general uh mike love and his devious ways and of course uh, the whole story of smile to the album but even so Despite all of that, you'll still get some amazing music here. So I own a lot of albums by the Beach Boys. This is me stack, and as well as that, I think all of these albums as well, apart from one, is a two for one, two. If that makes sense. A two for one, two. Yeah, cool. So we've got Surf and Safari with Surf in USA. A lot of people probably think this is them trying to get their foot in, but I think there's a lot of really great tracks here, some stuff that maybe people might overlook if they kind of skim the early Beach Boys era. I've just mentioned one of the albums is called Surf in the USA and there's a good chance you'll know that, but there's a lot of tracks on here that I really like. I like I like Chug -a -lug. There's a song called Cuckoo Clock, which I think's really, really sweet. There's a song on um well there's actually a bonus track that aren't on any of these called Land Ahoy that I've always loved. It's a really short track, it's only like a minute and a half. But I, I, actually I'd probably recommend that song out of all of it on here. Check out Land Ahoy by the Beach Boys. It's a Surfer Girl Shut Down Volume 2. A lot of great tracks on here as well. In My Rooms on this uh, collection. Warmth of the Sun is on here as well. Fun Fun Fun. Yeah, a lot of good stuff on that album. Little Deuce Coop with All Summer Long. So on here got a concept album about cars, so if you ever wanted a concept album about cars, then it's here for you, it's right here, but most people looked at All Summer Long as probably one of the more, well, at least the first essential Beach Boys album to own, because it has Wendy, it has a song All Summer Long, has a little Honda, Pusha By as well is on here, but um, the bonus tracks as well has Be True to Your School, which is a really good track as well, so uh, this is worth getting, probably the first one to get. You can't go wrong with this too for so this has the Beach Boys Two Day, which is one of my favourite Beach Boys album and Summer Days and Summer Nights. This is amazing. Um especially the album today. What a brilliant album that is. Just absolutely fantastic. Do you wanna dance? Go to my baby. When I grew up to be a man. Oh, what a heartfelt song that is. Dance, 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 kiss me, baby. Brilliant. Oh, and uh, she knows me too well. That's a great song as well. Yeah. This is this is a that's an essential two for one to one. This is the only one that isn't a two for one. Pet sounds, oh man, I don't need to talk about this one too much, really. Wouldn't it be nice? Uh, I'm waiting for the day. Sloop John B. God only knows. I know there's an answer. I mean, I could just say every song on here is a classic, but if you don't own this album, come on, man. That's entertainment again, three for five, and it's a two for so that's like a pound each for each album. Not bad. This has Smiley Smile and Wild Honey. And both of these albums are really good as well. If I could give a suggestion, I'd really suggest you guys check out the song Little Pad. Check out that one. And also check out the song Wild Honey. Uh, check out Country Air as well. That's a great song. The song Darling. This has a lot of great tracks on this too for as well. A lot, another two for one, which is an essential in my opinion. This is the album Sunflower and Surfs Up. Sunflower is a really, really great album, um, and Surf's Up uh, is a bit more mixed. There's a few tracks on there which are a bit shaky, but there's songs on Surf's Up which is some of the best Beach Boys songs you'll ever hear. Till I Dies, for example, on there. The song Surf's Up, Don't Look Go Near the Water is on there. Disney Girls is on that, but Sunflower as well. It's got Cool Cool Water. Uh, it's got All I Wanna Do. It's got Forever. It's got... Add some music to your day. If you want to hear a song that is about love and music, check out that one. This is Carl and the Passion So Tough with Holland. This is uh, a bit more mixed in terms of quality, but again, there's uh, songs on both the albums which are worth checking out, especially Holland in general, that's worth checking out if you want to hear 
uh, the Beach Boys get a bit more progressive, um, a bit more experimental in the sound too. Yeah, but this is um, still worth checking out. Uh, not not the first one I'd recommend, but if you like the Beach Boys and you want to hear lots of different sounds and varieties, and that's a it's a one to check out. Uh, it's a bit like this one, but even more so because this has fifteen big ones, which is a totally mixed bag of an album. There's some good songs on there, but there's some trash on there too. But this album has Love You, um, and that's a great album. Uh, but yeah. This is basically just when you're buying this, just basically think that you're buying Love You. Um, 15 Big Ones doesn't have a lot of good songs, to be honest. honest. Um, some of the best songs are actually covers. Uh, but, you know, the Beach Boys are a funny band because it's you get people who universally might think that there's a bad Beach Boys song, but at the same time, you'll still get people in comment sections of the songs that say that they love it. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. Um yeah and i got this literally because i got it quite cheap and this is quite a rare one by them um this is the miu album with the light album i'll be honest i haven't really listened to this one much uh, there's there's only a couple of tracks i even remember from the whole two albums uh, one of them short and bread good time and that's pretty much it i mean some songs on here like um oh god does this yeah this album has little hey little tomboy oh dear yeah but uh, that's that's it in terms of my beach boys collection digitally i have this smile sessions which is one of my favorite albums of all time despite being unfinished so if i have to give a recommendation try out the smile sessions in general but obviously pet sounds is the one that you want to go for if you haven't tried out any beach boys uh, music in general On two albums by Beach House, uh, these guys are, are still going on. Uh, this is like dream pop music. Um, most people would say that these two are the ones to go for if you like getting into Beach House. But basically, it's just a, a two-group uh, band, two-person group band. Uh, great, uh, really nice uh, female vocals uh, with some sort of heavenly uh, synthesizers and it usually has quite a simplistic beat to a lot of the tracks here. They're one of those bands that are more focused on like sonic textures and ambience and uh, like sort of really heavy dense sounds uh, that kind of wash over you more than something that's a bit more of a snappy catchy number uh, but these two albums are both really solid. This is one of the still one of the early CDs I ever owned um, Paul's Boutique by the Beastie Boys and I used to not like the Beastie Boys, uh, and I didn't really like this album, but in fact I remember a few years I would just try out the first couple of tracks and I would just never bother. But it was until about three years ago I really started listening to it, and this is actually one of my favourites ever. Uh, it's it's just a classic. Uh, the Dust Brothers' production um, is just so ahead of its time when it came out, and I think 88? I'm probably wrong. Uh, but anyways, just... Brilliant tracks. Um, one of my favourites is called The Sounds of Science, which uses the beat to uh, Sgt Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band, uh, mixing it up with a few other things, and it's just, it's just genius. Uh, Eggman's on here. Um, yeah, it's just, I couldn't fault the album. It's like an essential hip hop classic. Okay, of course, we're going to talk about the Beatles at some point. Uh, they're a huge part of my life, the same with many, many people out there in the world. And they're a huge part of my uh, video making career as well because when I started, actually it was the first ever video I made on my older channel back in 2010, I made a Please Please Me review and I was actually going to try and review every album in the discography, which isn't even that hard, but I think I only ever got up to the White Album. Uh, might restart and re-review uh, or I might just keep going from the White Album, I'm not sure, I might have a thing about it. Yeah, but... I don't have absolutely every single thing they ever released, but I've got a decent collection here. Uh, forgive me, I'm not going to go too much in depth with these, but yeah, I, obviously I love the Beatles, so I'll just quickly show these. Please please me. With the Beatles. A hard day's night. Beats for sale. Help! Rubber Soul. Revolver, 
the first ever CD that I bought to, and, and made us want to start my CD collection, Sgt. Pepper, you can tell because it's a bit less red than it should be. Magical Mystery Tour. The White Album. Yellow Submarine. Abbey Road. Let It Be. Past Masters. Right, and then we're just gonna get into some, some of this is just like totally trashed because they're really old. Um, but this is a two first single. This is uh, Real Love and Free as a Bird. I've got the Anthology Trilogy. One of them is a bit beaten up. Oh dear. Uh, but inside here I've got the disc to love. And somewhere in here I've got one as well, which uh, is my brother's technically. One day I actually want to talk about this, love. Um, probably more of a story time than it is a review. But I'd still like to talk about it and how much it means to me that. Uh, and after that, I've just got Let It Be Naked. Uh, I know I could get the BBC sessions. I do have, I used to have like uh, the old 94 version of the first part, because I know there's two parts now of live at the BBC. Don't know where that's gone. Uh, but yeah, I might someday get the remastered versions of both parts. Next, I'm going to be talking about Beck. I used to have a huge amount of Beck, uh, but I ended up just getting rid of a few CDs of his that I didn't listen to as much. So I've kept the ones that um, I personally feel are some of my favourites, but that's still a lot. <laughs> I've got a Stereopathetic Soul Manure. This is a strange one. There's a song on here called Today Has Been a Fucked Up Day. Oh boy, am I relating to that some days. Mellow Gold, this was the album that got us into Beck. Loads of great tracks on here. <sighs> Favourite on here? Hmm. Soul Suck and Jerk. Uh, One Foot in the Grave, this is a great album. Uh, a lot of more acoustic numbers on here. There's a song on here called Arsehole. It's not Arsehole, Asshole. Uh, that's great too. Uh, one of my favourites by him. Force Fields, excellent. Uh, and this has like huge amount of bonus tracks. It's nearly as long as the actual album. I'd really recommend a song called I Feel Lonesome on here. This like deluxe edition of Orderly, which might be my favourite album by him. Um, yeah, just got a good amount of memories with this album when I was in college. Yeah, Devil's Haircut, New Pollution, Jackass, Sissy Neck, Ramshackle. Yeah. This is just a this is just a classic mate. His album really kind of couldn't recommend this album enough. Uh, Mutations again, just loads of great tracks on here. Lazy Flies, Tropicalia, uh, Bottle of Blues, Cold Brains, Nobody's Fault but My Own. Yeah, this is just a really solid album. This is definitely one of his more self conscious and mature albums. This is Sea Change. It's not a happy listen as such, but it's a very effective album when you're in the right mood. Uh, Paper Tigers on here, guess I'm doing fine. Lords of Tears, Lost Cause. That's a heavy, heavy track. Like I say, got rid of a few albums, but the one I've kept is Modern Guilt, uh, which is, I think, one of his more underrated albums. This has, I think, there's, there isn't a bad track on here. Like, uh, Youthless Walls, Volcano, Gabba Ray, Chemtrails. There's no bad songs on here. This is, uh, if you're a Beck fan, it'd be kind of skipped. Most of his discography after the 90s, you've got to check out Bob and Guild. Yeah, I've got Natasha Benenfield's These Words. Just a childhood classic, this. I don't want to own a huge amount of Bell and Sebastian. Um, I used to own a few more, but I've given them to somebody. I can't remember who. But I've got two albums by them. Uh, one of them's a compilation, technically. So I've got Push Bar to Open uh, Old Wounds, which is like a collection of all of the old EPs. This has, for example, Dog Wheels, which is one of my favourite EPs of all time too. Yeah, there's 25 tracks on here and there's not one bad track. And the other one, uh, most people would say is their masterpiece, if you're feeling sinister. Uh, this has one of the probably most popular songs, like Dylan in the movies. Um, but again, no bad track. Classic. This is The Satanist by Behemoth. This is like black and death metal, I think it's technically counted as. 
Um, Behemoth have been going on since the 90s, um, but it's only until much recently that they've kind of gotten a lot of acclaim with this album. This is, yes, definitely, it's got a lot of harsh vocals and stuff, but um, just listen to the instrumentation. It's just so, so lush and just so well done. Um, it's just like immaculately produced album. Um, yeah, can't recommend it enough. This is one of my favourite metal albums of all time, which is Between the Buried and Me. With the album Colours, oh man, I've just got again a lot of great memories with this album too. Um, talk about just variation on this album, you get absolutely everything on here. Um, yeah, the songs are long, but oh, are they progressive? They changed styles like every minute. Some of the best drumming I've ever heard on an album is just, oh, it's just brilliant here. Oh man, I want to, it's, it's just made us want to put it on actually. The first one I tried it out, I was like, is that Matt Bellamy from Muse? And then like a minute later, I was like, hmm, I don't think he would do this. <laughs> but Ants of the Sky is like, oh, son of nothing. I just want to listen to it again, actually. <laughs> yeah, if you can make this out, I know it's got a lot of stickers on it, actually. But um, this is Big Boy's first solo album. Yeah, there's a track on here with Gucci Mane, Shine Blockers. That's a great track. Uh, there's a song on here with Janelle Monet, which is a great track, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is as close as you can get as like an essential album that's outcast related after outcast disbanded. Big L, Lifestyles of Dapua and Dangerous, classic hardcore hip hop, some of the best and most rugged lyrics you'll ever hear. Rest in peace, Big L. Had a really, really short career, sadly. Um, but again, just every track, stellar. This is just an essential classic hip hop album. Moving from Big L to Big Star, this is again a two for one with number one record in Radio City, classic power pop music here. And then from Big L we've got Big Punisher, uh, thank you mate, uh, doing a bit sensory there for us, I don't have to put any sensory bars, thanks for that buddy. Yeah, Capital Punishment again, this is a, another sort of classic hip hop record, just again, some Brilliant, brilliant tracks on here. He, he was again a great lyricist again, rest in peace. And this ha probably has my favourite hip hop skits of all time. Pack and a mac and a pack and a mac, pack and a mac and a mac and a mac, pack and a mac and a mac and a mac, pack and a mac and a mac. Yeah, mental. <laughs> and the final big, big more. Yeah, now this is again sort of a classic with the southern hip hop. Yeah, um, big more again, rest in peace. This is actually a really underrated album. He does a lot of singing on here and he actually holds his own quite a bit on here. There's a song on here, uh, I think it's the title track, City of Syrup, which features DJ Screw, which is, is an essential listen. But one of my favourite jams of all time is on here, which is called I Wonder. Listen to that track, man. The, the production's just... It just feels like summer. I used to own quite a lot of more Black Sabbath albums than I'm showing you here. Um, reason is that I owned like different editions of them and I wanted to get them in these like sort of digi packs, but I just never got around to it. So I, I do, I did used to own a few more albums than I do here, uh, but it's literally the first five. So self titled, Paranoid, my favourite, maybe Masters of Reality is the first one that I listened to by them. Volume 4, and this is with Masters of Reality, one of my favourites by them, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, which the title track and National Aquifer, which are both on here, ranked as my favourite Black Sabbath songs. A couple of James Blake albums here for you, the debut one, if you like your sort of experimental vocal dubstep music. Are you a fan of that? Are you a fan of vocal experimental dubstep music? Even though I've just made that shit up? And you like James Blake? Oh yeah. Yeah, um, this was around yeah 2011. This is where I kind of feel that auto tune was kind of getting a bit more respect in terms of how it could be used for artistic merits instead of just covering up bad singing. And you'll get that as soon as you hear the song Unlock. But this is probably still one of his best albums. Um, and on top of that, the only other one that I own by him is The Colour and Anything, which a lot of people would probably say this is an overbloated album. And yeah, there's 17 tracks, not all of them are gold, but some of them are some of my favourite James Blake songs. Yeah, put that away and talk to these on here. I Need a Forest Fire with Bonnie Ver is on here, which is one of my favourite tracks by James Blake. Not the best one by him, but still. Art Blakey with the album Morning, 
he, he was a pioneer in jazz drumming and he just it's just one of the best uh i think this is from the 50s yeah 1958 this is one of the essential jazz albums to listen to and he shines definitely on the song the drum thunder <laughs> um, but there's a great track on here called along came betty which i really like and the, and the title track more than just classic now quickly talk about bjork uh one of my favorite artists in general um, again, don't own a huge amount of her stuff on CD, but just she is one of my favourite favorite singers, just one of my favourite artists, just so unique. So her debut, post, Homogenic, my favourite album by Vespertine, and a pretty underrated album, but um, Mendula, this is the first four EPs by Black Flag. Containing probably one of the most classic punk songs, um, Nervous Breakdowns on here. Uh, this is one of the first ever instances of hardcore punk. Um, so just really a pretty aggressive music, very energetic. Uh, but all the tracks on here are great. Uh, six packs on here, a great Louis Louis cover. Uh, Fix Me is on here, Jealous Again is great. Uh, clocked In. That's a brilliant track as well. So uh, this is essential, even if it doesn't have Henry Rollins on it. It's taken a while for us to warm up to power metal, uh, but this album is probably the one that got me properly into it. This is Nightfall on Middle Earth by Blind Guardian. Just beautiful vocals and just so melodic. Uh, trying to think of some of my favourites on here, but this is just absolutely epic, very Tolkien. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to be in the right mood for it, but at the same time, I think I think this album might win you over. You'd be a bit like me, where you're like, this is a bit, this is a bit too much, but this is this is a great one to try out. Blondes, not Frank Ocean's Blonde, but Blondes, the the sort of electronic group. Uh, yeah, do you want to have a look at that? When when does HMV ever do anything like this before? What's 13 now? One pound. There's a lot of uh, really good tracks in here. Pretty progressive, uh, very rhythmic. Um, quite, uh, quite again, quite a soothing uh, sort of feel good uh, electronic album. Uh, this copy as well has a lot of re really good remixes on it as well. Right now, we've got the Blood Brothers here. Uh, this group is especially interesting for me because it was until I listened to this, the only other group that I listened to it where I was like, do I like this or is this too much? It was Captain Beefheart. Uh, but as soon as I put this on and I heard the track set fire to the face on fire, I was like, what is this? Especially the vocals, but it won, us all, uh, it won me over eventually. But yeah, a very eclectic album. I really recommend you try, guys check out Spit Shine Your Black Clouds. There's a funky, noisy song. <laughs> Bloomshed. This is happy hardcore technically as soon as you put this on you'll feel like you're in an anime intro or you feel like you're in Candyland or something uh, this um this again might be a bit too much for some people but if you just want to really just be really happy then i'd recommend try out <laughs> try out this album i'm a huge fan of blur um so i've got like these box deluxe edition things not everything by them. One day I would love to own all of the discography in these box things, uh, but for now I've got Modern Life is Rubbish, I've got Park Life, I've got The Great Escape, I've got the self-titled, oh, I've just got the standard edition, Jesus, what am I doing man, um, of 13, and I don't know why because this is my favourite Blur album as well, so I need to get around and get the deluxe edition of that. Uh, and uh, the Magic Whip as well. A couple of boards of Canada albums here. Music is the Right of Children and Tomorrow's Harvest. Yeah, uh, most people associate these guys with VFX Twin in terms of how influential and have just been so classic uh, in terms of their set in stone for IDM music in general. Uh, but both of these albums are great, but I think most people would say try out music as the Right of Children. Um, but there's an EP that they released as well, 
called A Beautiful Day Out in the Country, I believe. And that's probably like, in terms of a project I would recommend, uh, even though it's an EP. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why, but I've only got this album and Forever uh, by Bon Iver. I don't know where my other copies of everything else has gone. Uh, this is uh, technically still contemporary folk artist who is uh, a pioneer in pushing boundaries with what folk can do. Try out Skinny Love if you haven't. Try out Stax, uh, the song Forever. It's, uh, it's very beautiful music. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, these guys are, again, Southern hip hop. And just, I basically like, it's, it sounds really corny, but uh, I would call them the Beach Boys of hip hop because of the way that they use melodies and such and where, where they kind of sing rap. And it sounds corny, but it's, it's believe me, it's not. There's a, a song out here called Crossroads, which is a, a classic and again, one of my favorite tracks of all time. So listen to that song and you'll know what I mean. Bonnie Prince Billy with I See A Darkness. Again, folk music, but a lot more disturbing. Uh, kind of got an old country sound to it too, which uh, this is sort of creepy, uh, sort of cavernous music, a bit gloomy. It kind of makes you feel that you're um, on the off-beaten track where you shouldn't be. You've jumped over a private fence and the farmer's going to come out with a shotgun or he's going to knock you out and put you somewhere where you don't want to be. Boredoms, these are a Japanese band who originally started off making noise music like this, but they eventually uh, expanded to make more psychedelic music. Uh, this is very... Oof. This is noise rock technically, but at the same time, I think it's varied enough where it's uh, not going to be too repetitive for people who's in, uh, new in the noise rock. And we'll move on actually to another Japanese group. This is Boris, who are part of Drone Metal. Uh, but this isn't so much Drone Metal, I would say, this album Pink. Uh, this is probably one of the more catchiest songs. This is probably one of the more catchy albums actually that they made. Uh, it's still really heavy and dense with walls of feedback and such like that but i think it's catchy enough quickly talk about bowie i uh, won uh, way more cds than I, i'm showing off here but i've i've looked at every nook and cranny in my house and i cannot find where the other ones are so yeah i, I want at least another five here but anyways this is still some of my favorite bowie albums that i'm showing you here uh so anyways uh the man who sold the world hunky dory which probably is in terms of the classic period is my favourite album by Bowie. Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust. Lad and Sane. Low. Station to Station. Lodger. Scary Monsters and Super Creeps. And I mean, it's technically not in the classic period, but this ranks with Hunky Dory is my favourite album by him. The last album he ever released, Black Star. Talking about more creepy music, this is Brother, oh no, Brother Lynch Hung with The Seasons of Their Sickness. Uh, yeah, this is again is like sort of hardcore hip hop uh, with a kind of horrorcore element to it as well. Yeah, this. Um, this is an interesting one. This features uh, a rapper. I can't remember what he's called. It doesn't even say on here. There's no feature list. That's annoying. Uh, who? I'll put his name up here. Uh, Fair Warned. It's probably one of the creepiest stories you'll ever read about in terms of the back history of a rapper. Um, but he's on this. So, creepy. Talking about two Browns, we've got the crazy world of Arthur Brown and someone who's probably as crazy, James Brown. So this has Fire, which is probably one of the more oddball but great songs from the 60s. Um, this is a live album actually, um, but this is like, it's, it's funny only owning a uh, live album by James Brown, but I think this is where he like really excelled. Uh, this is actually still an early album. This is from the early 1960s, but still contains a lot of his like classic songs from then. But the just the energy, you just it, it soars through his speakers, man. It's this is one of the best live albums ever. So we've got Buena Vista Social Club. This is like Cuban jazz. This is 
a perfect album for the summer. Probably one of the strangest metal groups of all time, Mr. Bungle. I listened to this a lot in college. Uh, probably perfect time to be listening to it because it was my sort of sense of humour. This is some of the strangest music you'll ever listen to. No questions asked. Um, probably could say the same exactly for Disco Volante. Yeah, just what? Um, and this album by them, California, which I haven't listened to yet because I sound crazy, but like, do you ever like avoid listening to music even if you know you're going to enjoy it just because you want to be in the right setting or the right mind frame? And California is the one for me. I'm not, I'm not asking to go on holiday to California, but I want to be listening to it in a sunny location. And here in the northern England, there's no sunny locations. Just another diamond day. This is Vashti Bunyan. I talked a bit about her previously when I was talking about Animal Collective. This is absolutely essential if you like psychedelic music. This is mostly folk music, but I've always thought this album would be perfect if you were watching in some really old like quaint children's tv shows this would be like the perfect soundtrack she's just got such a lovely voice most of the tracks are really short um i just i couldn't fault this album it's just it's just beautiful um it's, yeah just another diamond day anyone man anyone this is one of those albums that anyone should just listen to and even if it's not your cup of tea, man, you, you can't say it's bad music. It's just so endearing. Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about... I've only got a couple of albums by Burial. Uh, just Future Garage, just master. He, uh, well, this is Burial, the self-titled album. He released this album, which many would consider a modern classic, Untrue. Brilliant album. Uh and I've also got like a, a compilation of two albums by him as well. Well, two EPs, sorry, Street Halo and Kindred. Um, the song Street Halo, uh, the song Lorna. Uh, has this got Astria Wasp? Yes, uh, Kindred has Astria Wasp as well. Just beautiful music as well, I'd, call, I'd say beautiful. Um, there's plenty of EPs. I want another EP on record, um, but most of the other stuff I want digitally. Uh, but yeah, Burial Man, if you haven't tried him, you like electronic music, just put him on. You just, you feel like you... Have you ever seen this picture of Spongebob? Yeah, that's what you feel like listening to Burial. I have got everything by her, but again, a bit like Bjork, one of my favourite artists of all time, especially female, Kate Bush. Uh, I would love to get that like new box set thing that let's just, just release, but hey oh, this is what I've got anyways for now. So we've got the kick inside got Never Forever, we've got The Dreamer, uh, Hounds of Love, one of my favourite albums of all time, and uh, these two I do own in the remastered vinyl, uh, yep, uh, is this The Sensual World, yep, and uh, which one is this, ah, Ariel as well, uh, yeah, Kate Bush, just uh, absolute genius. We are really good indie rock. This is Built to Spill. This is the only album I've tried by them so far. Uh, and I know they're one of those groups where they've released a lot of really good albums. Uh, but yeah, I just need to get my shit together with Built to Spill. And the final album I'll be talking about in this part of my CD collection is a rapper who I hold very near and dear to me, Buster Rhymes, with The Coming! This isn't comedy rap, technically, but he is just so off it. He's, he's been off it for a long time, but in this album especially, he's just nuts. The production's really good in it overall as well. Uh, a lot of, I love a lot of the instrumentals on here, but it's it doesn't matter what instrumental Buster Rhymes is on, I think it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's his performance that always just makes any track that's got him included just so good there's one music video that you need to take away from this and try out if you haven't already this is really bad because i've been talking about <laughs> the beatles and stuff like that but please check out um, there's a music video for it's like a two for one sort of thing so there's a music video for both uh, everything remains raw the song and uh, it's really the music video to a song out here called woo ha got you all a check it's just 
one of my favourite music videos of all time. Yeah. Okay guys, I think I knew I was coming to the end when I noticed that I've got a literal swimming pool full of CDs lying with us. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching everybody. Yeah, uh, sorry if this video was really long. I uh, promise you that the rest of them shouldn't be as long as uh, this one is. Uh, I shouldn't have as many uh, artists that are in each uh, letter, so it means I'll be able to talk a bit more about each album. Uh, but yeah, I had to blitz through this because uh, I'm already, I'm in my 20s, but if I talked extensively for each one, I'd probably die of old age. Uh, so thanks again for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care. Thanks for listening.